G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to the aquaponics area of our small little backyard farm. Today's clip we're going to be talking about the pH of water and how I'm lowering the pH of the water in the top up tank that will be going into the aquaponics system. Now before you start screaming at me, you don't need to lower the pH, I've got a little bit of a special circumstance and I thought I'd use it as a bit of a uh, learning tool for you folks out there. Normally you don't need to change the pH of your top up water when adding it to the aquaponic system because we're generally adding in small amounts every week. Uh, what happens is through the nitrification process, that's the fish producing waste, then the bacteria converting it from ammonia to nitrite to nitrate, um, that process chews up alkalinity in the water and alkalinity helps to keep your pH high. Now in my system, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I had a bit of a catastrophe where I had a valve fail, or actually I failed and didn't turn off a valve, and I topped up the system with very high pH tap water, and I've just thrown the whole system out of whack. So uh, at the moment it's sitting at around about 7.7 .7 to 7.9. Now normally I like to run my system around about 6.5 to 7, so that way the plants have a, a broad spectrum of nutrients available to them, and also it's, it's well within the comfort range of the native perch that we like to grow in the system here. Now with the top up water behind me here though, what I need to do is I need to lower the pH, I need to chew up some of that alkalinity in there that's keeping the pH high. So I, when I add it into our aquaponic system, it will slowly bring the pH down to what I'm hoping to be around about 6.8. So um, I'm going to be adding some phosphoric acid and using a calculator that Matthias from Aquaponics Anonymous, thank you very much mate, um, pointed out to me. And we're going to see if I can um, basically equalize the, uh, the pH in the system so it's good for the plants. Um, I still don't have any new fish in here yet, uh, but uh, fingers crossed there may be some in the coming weeks. We'll just see how things go. So before we get cracking on the um, chemistry side of things, I thought I'd explain what pH is. pH is a measure of how acidic or basic a solution is. So it goes from zero all the way up to 14 with seven being the neutral point. Now, every hop away from seven downwards towards zero. So when we hop from seven to six, six is 10 times more acidic than seven. Now, if we go another hop down to five, that is 100 times more acidic than it is at seven. Every hop is a multiplication of 10 from the previous. So it's a logarithmic scale. And the same works in reverse from seven up to eight. Eight is 10 times more basic than seven. Uh, nine is a hundred times more basic than seven and ten is a thousand times more basic than seven. So that's why what we would think is relatively small jumps in pH, say from um, seven down to six, can actually kill your fish. It's generally thought that um, no more than a swing of 0.3 per day over a 24 hour period is safe for your fish, anything more and you could end up in all sorts of problems. Now I'm only working with plants here, but I still like my plants. I don't want to damage my gingers. They've had enough trauma already. So hopefully every time I top up the water with this new um, lowered pH water I'm working on today, uh, it won't go any further than 0.5, uh, anything more than that. And I think I could, you know, inadvertently damage my plants, which is definitely something I don't want to do. Carbonate hardness or alkal total alkalinity is uh, a measure of water's ability to neutralize acids um, due to its contents of carbonates and bicarbonates. Uh, one thing I noticed early on with aquaponics when I was um, starting out, I tried to bring the pH of our tap water down. I added in some acid, the, took a pH reading straight away and I noticed it dropped um, actually way further than I thought. It went down below six. But within two or three hours of circulating the water of the, with the pump, it actually jumped back up to just below the original starting point. So um, that effect was the, the carbonates or bicarbonates in the water um, chewing up or neutralizing that acid. So that's the end of my little um, backyard science lesson. Uh, we'll bring the camera down and we'll have a look at the carbonate readings that I get from this water here. So here's the fish tank. And as you can tell, there is a air bubbler in there. Uh, what that's doing is basically gassing out any carbon dioxide that's in the water. When I originally filled up this tank, the pH was around about 7.7. .7. I popped the air stones in there and started to gas out the carbon dioxide, which tends to give you a more, uh, a, well, a lower pH reading. And we've ended up now with a reading of 8.1. So that's the true pH of the water in this tank here. Now, 
To do the test for the calcium hardness, um, I picked up one of these little API uh, test kits from uh, the folks at Aqua Gardening. Thank you very much, guys. And um, yeah, we can do a little bit of a reading using this. Just the carbonate hardness solution, the test tube, and I might just lay that down in case. And we also have a little booklet here. And at the end, it gives us um, a, a bit of a guide to work out what our hardness is in here. So to begin with, what I need is five mils of water from this system. So, oh, that was pretty close. Need just a little bit more, which means I'm going to overdo it. <laughs> Easiest way to get it out, yeah, i found, is just to flick it. And I think that's pretty much all it. So what we need to do now is add drops one at a time from this little bottle here. And in between adding the drops, we need to invert the test tube a few times just to mix the drops in. And what we need to do is count the number of drops and we stop once the water turns from blue to yellow. So this is drop number two. I'm not there yet. Three. Bit of a repetitive procedure. Go for four. Five. Seeing a slight colour change at five, six. There we go. And at six we have a colour change and it's just gone yellow. So remember that number, folks. I might forget. So it might be a bit hard for you folks to see there, but at six drops it's showing us that we have a calcium hardness of 107.4 parts per million. So what I need to do now is just go upstairs and plug these into the computer and then we'll come back down and we'll dose the system with some acid. So here we go, folks. We're on the alkalinity calculator. And it's actually put out by the New Hampshire Extension Office. So what we've got here is our company name, which is just my channel name, my, my name, the pH of the water sample, which is 8.1. Then down here we have the alkalinity of the sample, which was 107.4 parts per million. And then we have a target alkalinity or pH. This time I've chosen pH of 6. And the acid I'm using is an 85% phosphoric acid I picked up from Aqua Gardening. So we submit our sample. So here we go, this is the report. It's basically telling us what we have before and what we have after. And it's giving us the amount of acid we need to add into the um, system. So for small volumes, mils per litre is 0.098. Um, and you've also got your fluid ounces per gallon and your mil per gallon. So now to work out how much I need to add to the system. Per litre, I need to add this 0 0.98. I'll just bring up the calculator here. So it is 0 0.098. And I'm guessing I have roughly around about 850 litres in the system. So that gives us 83.3 mils. I'll round it down to about 83 mils of phosphoric acid at 85% that I need to bring the pH down. So there we go folks, one final look at the pH before I pull the meter out. It's 8.1. I don't want to leave these probes in there um, with the acid overnight. I'd rather take them out uh, just to make sure they don't get damaged. So as for the acid, um, I'm just going to be pouring it out into this measuring glass. Uh, I'm also not going to be adding the full um, 80 mils, 83.3 uh, uh, mils. I'll only add 80 because the marks here are, um, yeah, I've got 40 mils, 50 mils, then 60 mils. I'd rather add two batches of 40 and maybe add not enough than add too much. So um, we'll add 80 mils and see how that goes. Ah, childproof lid. So you do need to be very, very careful with this. I'm not going to hold on to the cup. Um, you're going to have to take my word for it, but we're hitting around about 40 mils now. And we'll go pop this into the tank. So the reason I'm leaving the bubbler in here is it will uh, help mix the acid through the water. You actually get quite a bit of movement just by the bubbles from down further in the tank coming up and circulating around. What I'm going to do though to try and protect my um, stone a little bit and also the pipe is add the acid over in this back corner. And we'll go back and get another 40 mils. And this slot here can go over the back as well. So there we go. Um, that's pretty much all it. Let's use a little bit of this water to rinse it out. Um, that's pretty much all it for now. 
Uh, it's getting a little bit dark, um, so I won't be able to film this in two or three hours time. So we'll pop back in the morning and we'll take another reading with the pH and see where she's sitting. So it's day two, folks, and I didn't actually think I'd get to film this. It was looking like rain this morning when I woke up and it's only drizzling now. But just to give you a bit of an idea on why I need to fix the pH, these are my poor aquaponic gingers. Ginger really doesn't like too high a pH and these guys aren't faring so well. You might be able to make out a bit of a burnt tip to some new growth and the other new growth coming through isn't looking too happy at all. Some of that damage on the turmeric behind it was already there so it's not caused by the high pH. And down the front here, the Brahmi, she's not looking too happy either. She's not as perky as she once was and I have a feeling that's got to do with the high pH. So I've got the pH meter set up uh, just over the top up tank. But just quickly before we have a look, uh, you folks who haven't seen our channel before, I've got a load of aquaponic videos. I'll pop them in the playlist at the end of the clip and also down in the description below. And if you haven't subscribed, you can do so by clicking on that little link down in the bottom of the screen and then hitting the bell icon once it appears. And that means you'll get notifications whenever I upload a clip. Now on to the pH. So we have the little combo meter here. I'll just turn it on and rinse off the probe. So I just like to wash off any storage solution and we'll pop it into the tank. And just to show you, um, we're sitting at around about 6.7, 6.6 there. Pop the probe in and we should see it drop to around about 6. I'm guessing anywhere between 5.9 and 6.2. So the probe's been in there for a few minutes and it looks like she's settling out around about 5.9. So I'm pretty chuffed with that. That's fairly close to what the calculator from the extension office uh, predicted would happen. Um, so I might have just miscalculated with the volume of water in here. Oh, there we go. She's jumping up to um, six and then down again. So fairly close as far as I'm concerned. Um, I'm just going to unclip all my cables here and we'll go down to the aquaponic system and we'll see what the uh, pH is doing in there today. So we'll just pop the probe down into the radial flow filter, which is where I always measure it. And it's probably going to take a little while for this to settle out. So it took a while for it to settle down, but she's sitting around about 7.7, 7.6, just fluctuating between the two of them there. So uh, the only thing I need to do now is um, top up the sump tank. All I need to do is turn this valve on, the one that caused me all the problems in the first place, and all that water is going via that hose down into the sump tank. I'd say it'll take about uh, 250 to 300 litres, so I'm just going to hang around until it's full, so we don't end up having another issue like we did the other week. There's enough water in the sump tank now, so I can turn off this newly installed valve that will hopefully stop me from overflowing the sump again. And then I can also go up and um, turn off the other valve on the top-up tank. So that's pretty much all it for now. We'll pop back in an hour or two and we'll take a pH reading to see where the system's sitting at. So just turn this little jobby on and you'll see we're sitting around about 7.3. So I did leave it, oh, 7.4, it's fluctuating between the two. I did um, pop the standpipes back in after about two hours after filling up the sump, um, just in case that the water passing through the grow bed may have affected the pH again, and waited another two hours, and here we are. So there we go, looks like she's, um, yeah, settled down around about 7.3, and back up to 7.4. So even though the pH didn't quite come down as far as I would have liked it to, it's down low enough at 7.3 that hopefully the next top up will just nudge it below that 7 mark. Um, I generally top up at least once a week and we're still fairly warm here even though we're in autumn. So I'd say we'd be putting another 200 litres in there in the next 7 to 10 days. Um, and after that, hopefully, the ginger will be feeling a little bit better. Over the next couple of weeks, I will be uh, bringing you along to show you a turmeric harvest. It needs to come out. And these gingers, if they don't pull through, I will be harvesting them a little bit earlier. And fingers crossed, we might be um, showing you popping a few jade perch in the system. I've just got to work out whether I want to uh, muck around with moving the, the tanks and re-plumbing the uh, filtration before, or maybe do that down the track. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, before I go, I would like to remind you all that I do have an online retail store that sells uni seals, root pouches, and venturis. So there'll be a link down in the description and also at a thumbnail at the end for that. Um, the, on that store page, there's also my affiliate links for Aqua Gardening, a premier aqua Ponics, uh, hydroponics and pond store here in Brisbane, Australia, 
and also my um, Amazon influencer store page for you folks over in America. So check them out um, if you feel like supporting the channel and you're in the market, of course, to buy a few bits of kit for your system or your garden. I just need to thank a couple of groups quickly. Firstly, the marvellous patrons over on Patreon. You can find our super contributors links down in the description below. Um, I've had a, a, I've been asking a few questions lately, uh, just getting opinions from folks. So uh, a couple of patrons there have uh, helped me out with some suggestions. Also asked the same question on my own uh, Facebook wall and I got loads of responses. I still haven't gone through all of them. So thank you very much to everyone who's responded. I will leave it there though. I do hope you're all well and happy and that your own systems and gardens are booming and I'll catch you next clip. Cheers folks, have a top one. Website that Matthias from Aquaponics Anonymous shared with me. Thank you very much, mate. Um, so yeah, uh, blah, 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 blah. Mosquitoes, blah. So to begin with,